So Harris's entrance into the race has reset it, not just for the presidential race, as you mentioned, but for the down ballot races as well. And I think it has had um, a much larger effect on con the battle for control of the House, where Republicans only have a four seat majority. And so all cycle, um, I think the House has kind of looked like the best area for Democrats to succeed in compared to the presidential race, um, where Biden was trailing Trump for most of the cycle at the top of the ticket, and the Senate, um, which is where the map currently is very good for Republicans this cycle. And so even now, I think with Harris at the top of the ticket, um, Democrats would need to hold seats in Montana and Ohio, which are states that Trump is still very likely to win by single or double digits this year. And so the Senate, I think, remains mm -hmm. difficult for for Democrats for that reason, just because of the map. But the House um, is a lot more feasible at this point. You know, I saw in polling, even before Biden's disastrous debate performance, he was a huge anchor on House Democrats. And, um, you know, these a lot of these House candidates were overperforming Biden pretty significantly. But it's very difficult um, at the end of the day for a House candidate to separate themselves from the top of the ticket as they're so tied to the national environment. Um, you know, in 2020, we only saw 16 congressional districts that voted one way for president and the other way mm -hmm. for Congress. And so um, Biden could have made it incredibly difficult for Democrats to take control of the House. Now with Harris at the top of the ticket, they're in a much stronger position. Um, and, you know, we still see control of the House to be close. Um, you know, I think if you look at the races in our toss-up column, you'll see that neither party has a clear edge, and it looks like it's going to come down to the two dozen or so races that we consider pure toss-ups. Um, but Democrats now have a much better shot at winning those toss-up races and gaining a majority. Well, and, and let's talk about where those toss-up races are actually concentrated, because we know a lot of them are in states like New York, for example, which is a safely blue state when it comes to the presidential election, but not so when it comes to the many different districts that are in the Empire State. So how should we be thinking about that kind of dynamic, Aaron, knowing that the presidential candidates themselves are focusing a lot of their time, energy, and frankly, resources into the swing states that will decide the electoral college, we're not necessarily going to see Harris or Trump frequently visiting New York, right? And how does that affect the candidates that are running there? Yeah, so you're right, Kaylee. It's an interesting dynamic. Um, the reason that you have um, a lot of competitive races in states like New York, California, Oregon, New Mexico, is because of the fact that Republicans did pretty well in these states during the midterm cycle, whereas Democrats did surprisingly well in a lot of the swing states like Michigan and Pennsylvania, Republicans made pretty significant gains in states like California and New York. Um, and so because of that, now Republicans have several vulnerable incumbents who are in these states. And because of the fact that you don't have um, the presidential candidates fighting the battleground on, on that territory, I think that Republican incumbents are in a slightly better position to separate themselves from the mm -hmm. top of the ticket in some ways. But at the end of the day, um, all of these races have become so nationalized. I think it's going to be difficult whether you're a Republican member in California or a Republican member in Michigan to distance yourselves from the national dynamics. They'll certainly try to do so. Um, and then on the other hand, yeah. most of the Democratic incumbents who are most vulnerable are actually in some of the more competitive states. So that includes Pennsylvania, mm. Michigan, Arizona, North Carolina. These are the states that have the most competitive districts that Democrats currently hold. Um, and so, you know, it's a weird geographic divide here. Um, I think that it could have a marginal impact maybe on Republicans' ability to hold the House, which could matter if control of the House is decided on the margins, which we think it will be. Um, but I do think at the end of the day, it is very difficult as a member of the House and certainly as a House candidate to separate yourselves from the national environment and from the top of the ticket.